So how do you know if your low back pain is coming from the body or if it's coming from your brain? We're gonna do a few gentle movements today to give you an idea of what you feel because the only way that you're going to know the true source of your low back pain is to try things. I'm Stephanie Carter Kelly. I'm a physical therapist that integrates yoga into everything that I do. I work with people that have chronic low back pain. Chronic means that you still hurt beyond the period of time when your body should have healed. And so when the body has healed, what is it then in the body that is the source of pain? The inflammation has gone down, uh, the structures of your back don't need to hurt, whether they're bulging discs or degenerative joints. Those don't have to hurt. So what is it about your body that is keeping you in pain? And the source is, is maybe the body because over time, if we have a lot of muscle tension or if we, if we stiffen as we age, we lose mobility. If we sit all day, we lose strength. So those can be sources of, of, of pain because the environment is not healthy. We need to have health of the body in order for it to feel less pain. But the source can also be the brain. Having low back pain, an injury that you injured your back, or just having pain sort of for no reason is a scary thing. And when you have that fear, the nervous system, which includes the brain, goes into a protective phase, a protective reaction. With that protective reaction, pain then becomes a warning signal to be careful, to not move. So the natural tendency of the nervous system in the, in the brain is to shut you down to prevent further injury. But we are smarter than our brain in some ways. We have to overcome that natural tendency that sends us into fight or flight. We have to overcome it and say, no, there's nothing here that's really hurting me. We have to activate the logical, rational parts of our brain to tell the nervous system to calm down. So that's what I mean that you can work with the brain, you can also work with the body, and both of those are actually very low risk when you compare all the other solutions that are out there for low back pain. Working with the body and working with the brain are low risk. You have to be consistent, you have to keep it up over time, but those methods of working with the body and the brain can be very high reward. So let's go, few, a few, go through a few things that you can do to work with the body and the brain. One of the things that I have discovered as a physical therapist is gentle movement is a great way to connect the brain to the body. So I'm sitting on the floor, but you can be sitting in a chair. You don't have to be sitting on the floor. If you choose to sit on the floor, you want to prop yourself up. You want to get your hips higher than your knees so that you can have a natural curve in your low back. And you just want to sit and breathe. You can be sitting in a chair. So if you're in your office right now or you're sitting at home, you can do this in a chair. Just feel supported in that chair. Feel those natural curves of your back and take a few breaths. The breath helps you tune into what you're actually feeling. What are the sensations of my body right now? We can use the breath, which is a part of the body, a part of our function. We can use the breath to signal to the brain that we're okay. If you take a nice big breath all the way down into the belly, If you make that breath even on the inhale as compared to the exhale, if 
if you allow yourself to just calm, release the tension out of the neck and shoulders all the way down the spine, you can signal to the brain and to the nervous system that you're okay. Even if you're still feeling pain while you're sitting here, that's okay. You can signal to the nervous system through the breath, through your thoughts, that the body is okay. Now we're gonna add some gentle movement. So in this sitting position, we're just gonna rock back and forth. We're gonna use the pelvis, those sit bones of the pelvis that are shaped like a rocking chair to just rock back and forth. What do you do to a child that you want to soothe and you want to tell them that you're okay, you rock. So just allow yourself to rock back and forth. Moving in the pelvis, your spine will also move. You get a little bit of arch in your low back, a little bit of rounding in your low back, but you're just rocking back and forth. These are natural movements of the spine. When you walk or you go from sit to stand, you create a little bit of arch you create a little bit of rounding. So just going back and forth between those two motions. And then make sure you're breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, nice and big, nice and even. Now come to a nice neutral position. Feel those normal curves of the spine and we're gonna rotate. Just rotate, take that left hand to the right leg and just rotate, look to the right. And take that nice even breath, working with the body to calm the brain. Personally, I think it's hard to just change my thoughts. It has taken me a long time to recognize a negative thought or um, a criticism about myself and change that thought. But if I work with the body, if I, if I really get inside of myself, tell myself that this body is strong and resilient, strengthening the body there's a physi physiological reason why strengthening the body is going to help that brain be more resilient and be more easily turned from negative to positive. Now rotate. Take that right hand and move it to the left thigh or the left knee. And I'm even rocking as I do that. Some of this is just natural movement. I'm trying to create anything that feels good through my spine, through my low back. And just gently twist and just breathe. Again, these are natural movements of the spine. You twist without even thinking about it. So now we're just consciously creating that twist, breathing, inhaling fully, exhaling fully, feeling what's going on, telling yourself it's okay. These are natural movements. And then come back to the center. There's two more movements. So we had the flexion and extension. We've got rotation. Now we're gonna side bend. Just take a hand. If you're sitting on the floor, you can take a hand to the floor. If you're sitting in a chair, just reach that right hand down. You can maybe grab the side of a chair and just support yourself in this side bending position. Your pelvis, your hips stay on the floor or on your chair and you're just allowing that spine to tilt and bend towards the side. Again, taking a big breath. As you take that big breath, you might realize, oh, I'm a little bit limited. I feel some stretching in this left 
part of my rib cage and in the side of my low back. Let me breathe a little bit deeper into that area. And then come back up and go to the left side. If you're sitting on the floor, take your left hand down to the floor. If you're sitting in a chair, just reach to the left side. Breathing now into that right side of the rib cage, that right side of the low back. Feel that breath all the way down into the belly, all the way down into those lower ribs. Your breath is even on the inhale, even on the exhale. And then come back up. And then just quiet your mind again and feel the sensations of your body. Come back to that breath. Allow that nervous system to calm, the brain, that peripheral nervous system, that autonomic nervous system that sends us into fight, flight, or freeze. Your body responds to that fight, flight, or freeze. Increasing the muscle tension to punch or run increasing the muscle tension to just paralyze in that fear. You can turn the body around, taking nice big breaths to dampen that reaction of the brain and the nervous system. Creating that calm. So there's really no separating working with the brain and working with the body. Even if you're sitting quietly or lying in meditation, you're still tapping into the sensations of the body. You can still feel the body. Body scan is one way of tapping into what you're feeling in the body. So though we try to separate them, here's the body, here's the brain, or the mind. They're not. They're together. They're separated. We need the brain to create the movement. We need to feel the body sometimes to know what's going on in our mind. Use them both. It's low risk but high reward. Again, I'm Stephanie Carter Kelly, a physical therapist that uses yoga to address all the reasons why you hurt. Namaste.